Hi guys, hope you're well. Uh, as we conclude our week again, can you believe it, of our Ephesians study? This is part 60 now, and by the time we conclude the series, which were uh, the whole book, the whole letter, which will be roughly in another 10 episodes, because we conclude this part today and get into the whole armour of God, which really brings it up to the conclusion of this. So, round about 70 parts that we'll have done and all with us by then we'll be meeting hopefully as a church we've fully envisaged that we'll be meeting then if not before then uh, and we'll give you instruction about that also these are challenging verses especially in the last of all challenging verses to be honest but this last whole section about submitting the being and none more so than this when it comes about bond servants and masters or labourers and workers or work colleagues towards bosses it's such a challenging thing especially when you can be dealing with difficult bosses and such but these are for me, very sanctifying verses. I'd love to do a whole series on these these parts alone and maybe I'll do something in time and do something in the side for this because I know people really struggle with this. But I believe this, the greater the struggle, the greater it's nothing to do with your boss and it's to do with you. The greater the struggle is the greater the problem with your relationship with Christ and the greater your need to submit to God in his ways and the battle to submit to that. Because these are not suggestions in these verses. Uh, husbands and wives, parenting and then born servants and masters. These are commands. So to struggle to follow the command uh, is disobedience to God. But there's permutations in amongst that. So let's conclude this section today. And we're going to read from verse 79. But before I do, I want to really read the whole law. Born servants, be obedient to those who are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, sincerity of heart, as the Christ was spoken about. Not with eye service and men pleasers. Eye service and men pleasers. I believe that when you see eye service and men pleasers, you could put the word financial insecurity in amongst that. Because that's usually what causes eye service and men pleasing, men pleasing towards bosses in a work relationship. It's usually financial insecurity, but you know that you end up putting up with stuff that, or you end up trying to perform all the time for acceptance. But as bond servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart, and then these verses that we'll conclude with, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. And I'm sure many of you have, have got difficult bosses, difficult work relationships, difficult clients, etc, etc. Remember what it says here though, as unto the Lord, not to men. And what this actually means is, if I'm not willing to do it, it's actually to God I'm not willing to do it for. It's not just about men. If it says you're doing it unto the Lord, and you refuse to do it, or I'm not doing it because they're a terrible boss and I'm not doing it for that reason. It's not the boss that you're harming, it's actually God. It's actually disobedience to God. So the struggle may be real, but when the struggle leads to a place of I'm not willing to do it, then it's actually goes deeper and now we're, now we're going beyond very sanctifying verses, these really sanctifying verses, eh, because it further highlights that the problem is not with the boss, but your problem is your problem is with your depth of relationship with Christ in order to submit to him and trust him. If God said it, it must be good for us for a reason and good for his overall plan. When we can't adhere to God's word due to a human or a person, it really has got little, absolutely little to nothing to do with them. If we if we can't do it when it's God's word that says it, it's got little to do with them and it's got everything to do with our flesh, our our pride and whatever's going on in our our world and our gods. Over the weeks I spoke to people who are challenged by this and other verses but somehow seem reluctant to apply it or 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 make excuses for not applying it or make excuses for not being able to adhere to it or or say you know what maybe one day I'll get there where you know this is not a this is not a, this is not a message that one day you'll get here. This is actually telling you what to do. And basically what it's saying is I'm not really bothering what you feel. What you feel is irrelevant you're following God and you're following his ways. It's very challenging and it's, you know, it, it's hard to sometimes comprehend that if you don't have a solid foundational relationship with Christ. And I think this, these verses highlight more about your relationship with Christ than they highlight any relationship you have with another human or a boss. But I get the struggle. I get the struggle real. I've had difficult bosses. I've been a difficult boss. But we have to be obedient to word. 
Uh, and this goes for all the last section in marriage, parenting, the rest. Of course it's not easy because your flesh doesn't want to submit. You know, your flesh doesn't want to submit. Your flesh doesn't want to submit to anything, including God's word. It wants to be in charge. Yet it's a command. Now, I, again, I'm not saying you should submit to abuse. I'm not saying you should sub submit to abuse. But what, what it is saying is, just because a boss has got a bad attitude does not mean all bets are off. Well, I'm not doing that because you've not been nice to me. You, it doesn't say that. We have got our part to play. No, it doesn't say you've got your part to play providing they play their part. You've got your part to play regardless of how they play their part. And as I say, this is why they're very sanctifying verses. No, uh, also it means... Uh, Another thing that you don't get into though, this is a common thing I've seen with workers, like the boss is terrible, the boss is bad, so everybody congregates together in the office or in the canteen and they all bad mouth and gossip about how bad the boss is. That should not be what a believer does, they should be set apart, they should be different from that kind of talk. Yeah, it might not make you popular, but then again, that's all part of helping you get free for people and free for financial insecurity and everything that goes with it. There's a brilliant, one of my favourite uh, box sets is Band of Brothers. It's a World War II thing, it's phenomenal. It's I think it's eight or nine parts. I've, I watch it at least once a year. But there's this section in it, this little bit, I could tell you about hundreds of bits, but in the context of this, and it's and it's Sergeant Lipton, he's a sergeant at the time, he goes on and becomes a lieutenant, which then I mean he'll come on and be a captain. No, he was such a wonderful soldier and leader. But anyway, they're in Bastogne and uh, they're in this kind of trench, it's freezing cold, and this new lieutenant's been rec recruited, uh, recruited to take after him. And he's absolutely, to, to be honest, he is hopeless. In fact, they say, there's a line in it that says he's not a bad leader because he makes bad decisions. He's a bad leader because he doesn't make any decisions. And he was really weak. And, and, and the soldiers are in a trench and a few of them are talking about how hopeless he is and how bad he is. And Lipton goes by and says, hey guys, keep your voices down. And he says two things here and just, it just epitomises this for me. He says, how hard must it be? How hard must it be for a young lieutenant to come in here and try and train you outstanding soldiers on your field? I wouldn't even want his job to come in and try and train you guys who are just such amazing, amazing soldiers. Secondly, there's other younger recruits here and they all look to you. And when they look to you, it means that they'll follow you. Be a leader, even if you've not got a title to be a leader and lead by example. And it's a wonderful bit. And you know, you just think what a brilliant bit of wisdom and leadership. He's, he's, he's not just, he's not disagreed with them about the poor leader, but he's made them rise above the poor leader. Verse seven therefore, as we move on and says, uh, knowing that whatever good anyone does, you will receive the same from the Lord, whether he's a slave or free. So, you, so basically sometimes you do need to suck it up. I don't mean suck up abuse. Depends on what level abuse it is. Sometimes you just need to suck it up, knowing that the bigger prize is at stake here, and the and 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 the immediate prize is is, is available. Is that I'm a I'm a dear to God's word. He said that I'm going to do it. Because whether I understand it or not, God's plans must be bigger, and He can bring good out of that. He may bring good. He may have a plan for the boss out of that. Uh, who knows, but overall it's the eternal prize that you're pursuing and all amongst this you're crucifying the flesh and there's very few things that will help you crucify the flesh more than this section here. No, there's such depth in these verses, don't you think? Uh, hence why I would love to speak about them much longer. To close, it goes on and says, and you masters do the same thing. No, be the same, be, do the same thing to them, giving up threatening. No, you have bad, bad bosses. Giving up threatening, over controlling. Now here, not showing in any goes on and says, eh, knowing, knowing your own master also is in heaven and there is no partiality. Meaning, whether you're a boss and they're a worker, it makes no difference to God. It's just positional, but but it's no value. Uh, and I think I think eh, this kind of really concludes this part of this section. Eh, we have to apply that. So here. Paul's talking about believers and I'll close with this but this also applies if your boss is not a believer if your boss is not a believer all bets are not off you've still to maintain integrity uh, whether your boss is a believer or not and if you're a boss then you should be applying it okay guys
tough subject, big subject. Let's trust in the word with it. Amen.